Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, June 23, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. Boy, do we have stuff on the docket today. We have stuff going on in and around the markets. There's stuff going on from a short-term perspective. There's stuff going on into the closing bell today. There's just stuff going on around the markets. We have canaries doing one thing. We have leading indicators doing another. We have the market doing the nasty into the close. We're going to unpack the whole ball of wax today. We're going to look across the board at all the charts we need to look at. We're going to get the best possible picture of the scenario going forward. Let's start with the first few things that jump off the daily chart. A. We have 312.33, not necessarily 312.15. 312.33, as of today, is the new 312.15. However, what you're going to see into the closing bell was somewhat interesting as it relates to 312.15 or any number we want to put up on the board. I want to show you the market activity into the closing bell. Might as well do it right now. Here's a five minute chart that includes the aftermarket activity. The funny colors are the aftermarket activity. Here's the four o'clock close. So this is 405, 10, 15, and that's really the end of the ball game. Why do I say that? Because that's when the futures close at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anything after that is what it is. I'm really focused on the 4 o'clock close and the 4.15 close as what's important to me. So let's check out what happened even on a more micro scale. The market broke down below 3.12.33 into the closing bell. So right here is about 10 minutes until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So they went down, they tried to rally back up, and it was a miss. You can see where 312.33 now or something in and around there within pennies is all of a sudden resistance. And after the closing bell, they broke down and tried to rally back. Here's a high of 312.20, another high of 312.18. And this is 415 on the button, the closing price in that candle. And remember, this is a one minute chart. So the high of the one minute chart was 312.18 trying to recapture 312.15 and the low and the closing price is 311.83. Why do I bring all this up? How can this be so important? When you get knee deep into the numbers like I do, everything's important. Now let's talk about it from a bigger picture perspective. Why was 312.33 important? From there, we have to go over to the hourly chart, and this is one that we pointed out yesterday. The high in this hourly breakdown candle is exactly 312.33. So here's the deal. This morning, the market jumps over the high of the breakdown candle on the gap up, and we'll talk about the futures dipping down overnight in a minute. But if we've learned anything, and certainly this is one of those things among many, many others that's taught in the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader, when they jump over a breakdown candle, you can see what was happening before they did it. Before they did it, they were making a bearish wedgish fashion pattern, and this will normally play out in the southern direction. Instead, they gap over it. That's a bullish signal, and they started eating time off the clock building energy, consolidating all day to get through the next pivot area right up here, and they couldn't do it. In fact, that was resistance. Under normal garden variety conditions, consolidating or eating time off the clock, building energy underneath a would-be resistance area is the market telling you it's painting the picture, it's building energy to bust through and go higher. Instead, it failed and closed below 312.33, below that hourly breakdown candle, right into the end of the day. How do we want to read that? From a short-term perspective, I have no choice but to read that as negative behavior. Why is that? Because they had every opportunity to close above. They had every opportunity to continue higher today. Instead, what they chose to do, they picked the southern direction and what they chose to do was close below an important spot 312.33 
breakdown candle high, they closed below it. To me, that's a recapture of an area that was gapped above this morning, a recapture right into the end of the day. How in the world can that be bullish and not bearish? It is bearish on its face. The duck says it's bearish. Trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew may have different designs. That's the awareness. If I'm just reading the tape from a short-term perspective, the dive down into the end of the day tells me bearish behavior on its face. If they gap back up tomorrow, then it was simply trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew playing games with the numbers, playing games with the traders. The close below 312.33, what else does that signify under normal garden variety conditions that would signify that the next stop, rather than going up north, is actually going farther south to fill the gap? The gap is left open at 310.66 right here, and could they go lower? Of course they could. There's moving averages here. There's a 50 period moving average comes in slightly below 310.57, might be a notch higher in the morning. And here's the deal. If they're going south and that gap doesn't hold, the one we just discussed, then it's back to 307 and there's trouble in the neighborhood. Trouble for the bulls, not for the bears. What's the bull case for tomorrow? If they're gapping up and they open up above 312.33, it's generally going to be a hint that the repair job has been done. It was a shenanigan move into the close and above 314 on hourly closes and she's going higher. By the way, just as a point of interest or a point of fact, how do we know that 312.33 was the new 312.15 today? Well, here you go. At the 1015 candle, the low is 312.30. After that, they spiked it through by a little bit, making a low of 312.11, and then they ripped it higher. And then right here, look at this. Into the end of the day, the low in this candle was 312.33 on the button, and then they gave up the ghost into the end of the day. How about inside the numbers? I think it's important that we get a sense for what was discussed in the notes today, both the bull case, what would be the failure point, it's obvious now, you know that it was, in fact, 312.33. Early in the day, we had our sights set on 319. They looked like they were going to do it today. And especially, and now we can discuss that move lower in the futures overnight. They moved like 60 points down and then they bounced right back. The question is, was that a warning signal? Was that a flare shot up in the air, a shot across the bow? Are we going to see some more trouble in the nights and days ahead? Or, and the other side of this was, and that was the prevailing wisdom, at least from this trader this morning, which was, hey, they got hit pretty hard overnight. They snapped right back. They opened above an important spot that under normal, and I say normal with emphasis, normal garden variety conditions that was the tell they did the repair job it was a fake out they're going higher they had every excuse to go lower last night instead they chose to snap right back that's generally the way the market paints the picture that it's going higher they didn't do it today maybe they do it tomorrow but maybe it was the other thing maybe it was the flare shot up in the air Maybe it was a warning signal. It's an awareness. We'll see what happens overnight between Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll see how they open them up Wednesday. Was 312.33, was that dive down at the end of the day? Was that the tell? Was that the market's way of issuing a ticket to the parade for the bears? We're going to find out sooner than later. So let's scroll up here and we'll see what went on throughout the morning session. And you can see already... We're focused in on 312.33. So the early thoughts, they're posted on the board anywhere between 5 or 10 minutes before the open up to maybe even 30 or 40 minutes before the open, which was in fact the case today. So let's check out what was going on. The location where Trick and Company would drop price, and this is written as price was a lot higher than the 3130 we're going to talk about next. That's where they would drop price to in the midst of an early morning shakeout. The area of 3130. Underneath that, we have the important 31233. That was essentially the safety net. You know the routine. Here's a copy of the ES 
September contract. That's the S&P E-mini futures. There's 3130 across the board. The vertical line is today's activity, which is everything to the right of it. And you see the routine. 3130, they dropped them right out of the gate, and then they bounced them right off 3130. Maybe it was a little bit below, but that was the general area. What's this down here? Where are we going? You already saw that in the spider chart. Here's the spider chart again, 31233. So we have the numbers. We had one number, then we had the other number. Now, back to the commentary. The other thing we had was what was going to be the resistance area up north. Here at 940, we're talking about 314 to 314.38. Now, we're talking about it at 940 in the morning. Back to the SPY chart, there's 314, and slightly up above is 314.38, which what they ran and got to later on in the day. You have to know your numbers moving right along. Now, as the morning goes on, you can start and stop the video or stop and start the video at your leisure. Read the notes. I urge you to do so. Read the notes. Go back to the charts and see what else we had up our sleeve inside the numbers as it related to the S&P today. As long as you have a tour guide and you know your numbers, as long as the market is closing hourly or even shorter term candles, as you'll see me write from time to time, as long as the market is closing above or below certain areas, we know what the next general area of either overhead resistance or support will be. That's the tour guide that traders need. Then how do you use it? You take everything else that's taught in the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader, you put it all together, and what you're getting is the three-pillar approach. Pillar number one, are these videos posted every night on YouTube. Pillar number two is understanding the foundation of how the market works, which is really pillar number one, and this is pillar number two. And then pillar number three is inside the numbers where you get the tour guide stuff all day, every day. You get stocks on the move, you get the S&P, you get commentary, you get a little slapstick in the middle. And we know that in the middle of the day, the market got very, very quiet. It went sideways for hours until the end of the day. So you got the gap up, you got a little bit of a shakeout type of routine early in the morning, goes sideways all day long, and then at the end of the day, they kill him into the close. How about stocks on the move? We have to take the good, the bad, and the ugly, so we're going to go over the two that hit their price objective. We'll even take a look at T-Mobile, T-M-U-S, which jumped the target, but we want to take a look at that anyway to prove a point. We'll use it as a learning opportunity, and we'll also discuss the shit burger that was ate today. Let's eat the big green frog right out of the chute. So you can see that Spirit Aero Systems, SPR, was getting a nice haircut at the open. The price identified at 25.15 wasn't even close. Wrong number. 24.13 was a price, but it didn't stay there for very long. It hung out for a cup of coffee, kind of an espresso, if you will, and then it went to another destination. So there's a couple of things. A, I got it wrong. That's going to happen. It's the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, these trades are going to work out. A little bit better than 80% of the time. 20% of the time, you're going to have a losing trade on your hands. It sucks. We don't like it. Nobody likes it. It's a function of the business. That's why we use stops. The stop was 23.79 on hourly closes. So what happened? Right here, 10.30, the closing price, 23.68. I said, see you later, posted it on the board, took it off my screen, and moved on. I've had other losses. You've had other losses. I've had bigger losses. It is what it is. You move on. How about H-U-Y-A? Haircut at the open. You can see what happened. 1833 was the number, the first number on the board. It worked, but it never gave a rocket ride. It flirted with the number. Long time this morning. And it gave what are called base hits. Nothing wrong with base hits. They're fine. It's just not what we're looking for when we get in uniform and show up every day ready to go. We would like better trades, but we take the base hits and we move it along. And this was the one. This was the one that woulda, coulda, shoulda. Some traders bought it anyway, but it opened up below the number. So you see here the opening print is 103.71, 
below the 104.27 that I had listed on the board. We've seen this happen before. You don't know when they open up below the number whether they're going to keep going south or that's the number and they're just going to rip it up, which is pretty much what happened today. And this was the trade we were looking for. I know some traders jumped in. I got the emails. They were happy campers. In fact, in some cases, it wiped out the losses and put them in a profit scenario based on the trade in SPR. Good for them, but they broke the rules. They know they broke the rules. I don't do it. I don't buy them when they open below the number. I wait for the second number if there is one, or I just give it a pass. But the lesson learned is this was the number. They just did a little bit of a screw job as far as we were concerned. But that was the trade we were looking for. That was better than a base hit. So all in all, not a great day for inside the number stocks on the move section, but it is what it is. We take the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we move it along. This is pretty good day in and day out. By the way, here's an hourly chart of the futures, and they continued lower since we last looked at them a little while ago. But here's something I want to point out. So the futures run up. They have that EKG going on overnight. So this is 2,200 hours, 10 o'clock in the evening, 9 to 10 o'clock is when the futures dropped significantly, and they snapped right back. And look where we are now. So when they snapped right back, what they did was they ate some time off the clock in this general area, and then they went on another breakout. Now, what are they doing here? Coming back to retest the last breakout area that occurred last night? Well, that's possible. I just noticed it in real time. We're on live TV. I pulled up the chart because I wanted to see where the price is to talk about it with you and noticed where we are. So we'll see what happens when they resume trading overnight. What about the IWM? The IWM looked like it was going to break out. It was strong. And then we got a failure where? At its breakdown candle high. The high of this breakdown candle is 144.51. The high today is 144.66. They close below it. Doesn't mean they can't work some more time off the clock and go higher. It just means that it failed today. They're also a lot closer to their gap than the SPY is to its gap. This gap is at 142.40. They close the day at 143. It's a stone's throw away, kind of like a little chip shot. You know, the kind out of the first cut where you can kind of slide the club underneath the ball, pop it on the green. The tight ones, they're the ones sometimes that end up being the skull jobs across the green. Watch your shins. Also, for the bull case in the IWM, as long as they stay closing daily above about 141, that's still in the bull camp. What's going on with the folks down at the transportation department, our canary in the coal mine? Remember, the IWM is my favorite market leading indicator. The transports is the second favorite, but a number one canary in the coal mine. So here's what we have. We have a divergence. That's why it's a puzzle piece and it's on the table. The divergence is the transports stayed rather bullish today when everything else sold off. So it came down a little bit into the end of the day, but nothing like the other markets. What's that trying to tell us? Is the canary in the coal mine trying to tell us that it was the trick trap fool and frustrate crew issuing a case of the shenanigans into the close and the transports are the actual tell, the actual flare up in the air. We won't know until tomorrow. It's an awareness that you have to be aware of. As long as this transports stay closing daily above 9,000, it's a little higher than that, but we'll use round numbers for this purpose. As long as they close above 9,000, they're good. Closing below 9,000, they're not good. That's based on daily closes. You can always start off with hourly, but the number is based on a daily close. What about the folks out in Silicon Valley? The Q's, Q cubed. Well, there's a couple of things going on. Big picture perspective, nothing wrong with this chart. Smaller picture perspective, they're a little extended away from home base. And we have a tail candle on the daily chart today. Now. Under normal garden variety conditions, with the way the queues have been going and the market rising, if the S&P closed well today, I would actually tend to ignore that tail candle in the queues. However, based on the activity, the price action into the close, I'm going to put some weight on the tail candle. I'm going to put it as a puzzle piece 
and see what happens. Maybe they fill the gap. Maybe that's where they stop. I'm talking about the gap down below, and the gap is actually at, and I'll give you the price, 246.74. And we know that the market, any market, any chart, any market, never really likes to get too far away from home base. Home base is the 20-period moving average. Right now, they're a little bit far from home base, so it's nothing to come back a little bit. That's why it's not like a massive reversal tail. It's not on volume. It's not a big deal, but I've got a head scratcher with the price action in the S&P into the end of the day. All you are is inside my head, dangerous place to be, put your galoshes on. What about the financials? Without the financials, the market isn't going anywhere in either direction. So here we are today with a would-be, could-be, tried-to rally. They tried to get above the 100-period moving average. They couldn't do it. It's not in the same position as the other charts. They weren't near the same type of breakdown candle high. However, they finished really, really poorly, and they're also a chip shot away from a gap but they're also riding this 100 period moving average, unable to close above. They've only closed above in the last rally up here, everything to the left of that. Down here, once they got down and they bounced back, they were never really able other than the first day to close or sustain closes above the 100 period moving average. Now, granted, this could be what's going on here. It's a bullish, flaggish pattern that will ultimately break to the upside, getting up to here and the 200 period moving average, these highs, and potentially bust through. That is what could be happening. We take it one day at a time. I don't like the price action into the end of the day in the SPY. Again, could be tricking company. We don't know yet. It's an awareness. That's why it's a puzzle piece. That's why it's front and center on the table. You know, the market can be related to a lot of things in life. It's really an endless supply of things, but I'll use one example that a lot of people can relate to. People that have kids. If your kid looks like he's getting or she's getting into trouble, doesn't matter what kind of trouble, everybody's got a different version of trouble. But if it looks that way, it's kind of like that walks like a duck, talks like a duck thing. If it looks like the kid is getting into trouble, you want to step in and prevent the kid from pain, prevent the kid from trouble. Sometimes we let certain things happen as life's lesson, but we're there to protect our children. So we're generally going to step in and prevent things from going wrong. So therefore, when the market looks like it might be getting into a little trouble, we tend to step aside and be somewhat protective. Same concept, right? When the market looks like one thing and all the charts line up the same and it's all bullish or all bearish and there's really nothing else to the imagination other than maybe a black swan event, that's one thing. But when they do something into the end of the day, you have divergences on one chart and some other stuff on other charts and you really don't know, you tend to be protective. And that goes in with, we run this as a business. Here's what traders do sometimes. Tell me if this may be you. You're in a trade and you're in the trade for all the right reasons. Whatever that trade may be, it's a hypothetical trade. All of a sudden, at some point during the trade, during the day, the trade starts to go the other way. All of a sudden, the chart pattern that was active and present when we took the trade is all of a sudden starting to look different. The trade or the setup is starting to fail and instead of, and we know where we're wrong on the trade before we get in. So instead of losing small and fast, we're in the trade. We don't want to take the loss. So instead, we stay in the trade and we turn what should be a either a scalp or day trade into a swing trade that's based on hopium and no longer the pattern that existed before because we didn't want to take the loss. All the rules just went out the window because we didn't want to cut and run. The setup wasn't the same setup anymore, but our stubbornness wouldn't allow us to recognize it. We start making excuses that we misinterpret for reasons why to stay in the trade. That's called bad business. Just a little sidebar inside my head. 
walk down memory lane. How about the hourly chart of the XLF? Notwithstanding where price is, where they can't get to on the daily chart, where they are on the daily chart, just this chart and this chart alone, have they done anything to really break the concept of what was going on even yesterday? And the answer is, no, they haven't. Now they may come down and fill this gap. That's one thing. And if they start getting below here, that's something else. But essentially, this is still the same thing it was yesterday. Nothing different has happened. What about the 120 minute chart? So here we go. It's the same thing we just looked at in the hourly chart. In concept, this is your channel, right? What happens? Maybe they come down to the bottom, but what happens? And let me get rid of the channel. What happens if they all of a sudden jump above the convergence of these moving averages? And this is a two hour chart, so it's got twice the strength, twice the oomph as an hourly chart. And yes, oomph is a technical term. But if they jump into or over the convergence of these moving averages, what I can tell you is they'd be headed for 2450, give or take. Let's further the chart lesson and use the 240 minute chart with the XLF. We even have a more pressing scenario with moving averages. We have a trifecta convergence, 20, 200, and 50 period moving average. We're below them all, so here's the deal. That's bearish on its face. Get above them and start trading and closing 240 minute candles above. That's bullish. Can't do it. That's bearish. It's just that simple. So this is how this trader is reading these charts. And it really doesn't matter that it was an XLF chart, an ABC chart, or an XYZ chart. All charts act and react the same way, which is exactly and precisely what's taught in the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader. Smash Mouth, 240 minute chart, you have breakdown candle high, can't close above, that's one thing. Daily chart, same routine, nothing happened today in the SMH, we'll just move it along. And in moving it along, the question comes up, have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, and that without you these videos are not possible? That is true and accurate information. I'm gonna pull the ripcord here, it's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss. I'm David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.